Welcome to the next lesson, applications of AI in both school and industry. You might be familiar with the SAMR model of edtech integration. It describes how new technology waves are integrated into the classroom in different ways. At the bottom, we have S, substitution, where technology acts as a direct substitute for some pre-existing process. Next, we typically move on to augmentation, where technology can act as a direct substitute but with a functional improvement to how things are being done. Then we get into a more interesting area with modification and redefinition, where a technology can actually change how a practice or process is done in the classroom. Let's take a look at how the SAMR model applies to AI integration in the classroom. An easy example of substitution is using AI to create a worksheet. It's something that every teacher has done themselves manually before, and by using AI, you can save some time. That said, it only falls under substitution because the end experience for students is the same. Regardless of whether a teacher or an AI made a worksheet, they're still getting a physical worksheet to fill out. Next is augmentation, where AI goes beyond just replacing tasks that you've done before and augments your workflow to help you do more. For example, let's say you're researching a topic on the internet to get ready for teaching a lesson about it the next day in class. You could go to an AI tool like Perplexity, ChatGPT, or Flint, feed it some sources that you found online, and have it give you an overview of the topic with detailed summaries citing the sources that you provided. Using AI in that way might help you make a better lesson plan than you would be able to before, and it'll save you time in the process. Next, we get into modification, which is where task redesign in the classroom can start to happen. For example, you might replace a static exit quiz with an AI personalized quiz, where AI is asking students specific questions based on what they struggled about in class and giving you a summary of where each student's at. And finally, we can get into redefinition, where using AI, you can create learning experiences for your students that were previously totally unfathomable. Let's say you're a history teacher teaching your students about the Revolutionary War. You could have them interview George Washington, played by AI, and ask him about how he was fighting the Redcoats. As you think about using AI in your own work as a teacher, think about what you might do with an extra pair of hands in the form of a teaching assistant in the room. Would you use them to brainstorm new assessment ideas, draft lesson plans for you that you then review and approve of, or even do some preliminary grading of student work to provide extra feedback in a shorter period of time? And for students, our view is that the most effective use of AI is when students are directly interacting with the system so that I can act as a responsible teaching assistant or tutor, helping them learn new concepts or iron out any sort of misunderstandings. Some of the key advantages that AI has in helping students has to do with personalized and immediate feedback based on how students respond to specific questions. It's also important to remember that in some areas, AI is truly superhuman. To our knowledge, there is no teacher in the world that can speak in over 50 languages and in over 200 dialects. But many teachers have challenges with communicating with students that might come from a different language speaking background. It's important to remember that AI is incredibly good at translation and communicating in multiple languages. So you can imagine using an AI system to do real-time translation and leveling of content and materials to reach language learners. As you read through the next few sections on Bloom's Two Sigma problem and the flipped classroom, you'll notice that we're tying the benefits of AI for personalized learning back to pre-existing approaches and challenges that have been long-standing in education. It's no surprise that more personalization and that more time in the classroom with one-on-one -on -one time with teachers and group work can lead to better results. What AI enables teachers to do is better implement these best practices given limited time and resources. And of course, the impact of AI goes well beyond education. AI is actively disrupting and transforming many of the fields that your students may want to pursue in terms of future careers. And just as you're learning right now how you can best use AI as an educator, students will also have to adapt their skill sets to best use AI to perform at the highest level in their careers. Let's say some of your students want to go into the medicine field. Many doctors today already use AI diagnostic tools 
to provide more accurate prescriptions. And in the legal field, using AI to process and to understand hundreds of thousands of pages of documents is already common practice. When it comes to giving students a mental model to think through this disruption, there's two narratives to choose from, and we have a strong preference for the latter. So the first is the displacement narrative of AI taking away jobs. It's true that AI will disrupt many fields, and many of the jobs that exist today may not exist in their same form in the future. But that's happened in the past with many other forms of technology. What's important to recognize though, looking at past shifts in technology, is that technology advancements cause the job market to evolve. So the latter narrative that I mentioned earlier, which we highly prefer, is that of evolution, where AI can help people with their jobs and help create net new jobs. This will likely lead to human skills like connection, communication, and empathy being even more important in the future than in the past. And my favorite analogy here of a past shift that we can learn from is what happened to bank tellers once the ATM was invented. The ATM, or the automatic teller machine, was quite literally designed to do exactly what a human teller at banks did. But once the ATM was invented and spread across the world, it actually led to a rise in the number of bank tellers. And the level of work that bank tellers now do is more creative, more challenging, and is generally better paid. And the fundamental reason for that shift is the invention of the ATM made it possible for more banks to offer more services and open more branches. So that overall increase of economic productivity in the banking sector actually created more jobs, despite there being an invention literally called the automatic teller machine. So while AI will likely disrupt many careers that exist today, we believe it'll create many more opportunities for interesting work to be done by humans. With that, I'll let you wrap up the reading for this section, and I'll see you in the next lesson.